And it's the last day of campaign 2020. And as it always does, the race boils down to about a half a dozen key battleground states. Most of them clustered along that blue wall of the Northeast and into the Midwest, the industrial rust belt of Pennsylvania, Ohio, Michigan, Wisconsin, and maybe Minnesota. And in Pennsylvania, my home state, this past weekend, the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette, a newspaper that hasn't endorsed a Republican in half a century, comes out in support of Donald J. Trump. That tells you a little bit about what's going on in the Keystone State. And of course, the president continues to have these gigantic rallies, almost 60,000 in Butler, Pennsylvania over the weekend, and continuing into today, four and five a day. Not only his tremendous energy level, but the fact that he's increasing his energy as the day goes on. It's really remarkable. Meanwhile, the Biden uh, campaign. Hey, Tyler, <laughs> that was part one. We got to go to part two. It's the last day. Give me one more second. You folks won't mind, I know. To talk about real quick, Joe Biden telling Philadelphia Eagles fans he's wearing an Eagles jacket when in point of fact, it was a Delaware Blue Hens coat. Go figure. But anyway, we've also got races for the U.S. Senate not in Pennsylvania, but several across the country that are really pivotal because the Democrats hope to pick up control of the Senate. And because of the cycle, two thirds of the seats are Republican defense, and they've got a lot of tough races. There really are only two seriously potential takeaways for the Republicans, one of them almost assured in Alabama, the other in Michigan, which is still a toss up. But you know, ultimately what this campaign boils down to isn't personalities. It really isn't even so much policies. It's a fundamental view of this country. Do we really believe that this is the last best hope of mankind on earth? That it is a truly exceptional nation, blessed by God in unique ways, despite all of its frailties, foibles, and problems? Or do we think it's fundamentally an evil nation that is imbued with in, uh, systemic racism and a culture of greed driven by capitalism that is of the bad variety that needs to be torn apart and restructured. That really is the choice tomorrow. And if you believe, as Ronald Reagan often told us, that we are still a shining city on a hill, it's pretty obvious which way the choice goes. And in the interest of fairness, I'll give the opposition equal time for just one second. But before we do, I'll just say, that's the best minute or two of your day. Look, I'll do what he's unable to do. I'll lead an effective strategy to mobilize true international suffer to pressure, isolate and punish China. And by the way, you know, I sit on the stand and it get hot. I got a lot of, I got hairy legs that turn, that, 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 that turn uh, uh, um, blonde in the sun and the kids used to come up and reach in the pool and rub my leg down so it was straight and then watch the hair c come back up again they look at it so I learned about roaches I learned about kids jumping on my lap and I've loved kids jumping on my lap the best politicians that money can buy the establishment hates them the fat cats hate them everybody hates Trump except the people I'll get out of the way, cause in the USA, democracy is working again.